From the News Channel 5 Network, this is On The Line. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Open Line. Good show tonight. Talking about something that is on everyone's mind here in Nashville, and that is transportation, traffic. Mayor Megan Barry has a new transportation agenda, not a plan, an agenda. It was released within the last three weeks. So what is on that agenda? What does it mean for all of us? That's what we'll talk about tonight. Happy to have with us people who can help us with that. Jeff Hammond with Metro Public Works, the Division of Transportation. Jeff, thank you for being with us. Thank you. Glad to be here. Aaron Hafkinschel from the uh, Director of Transportation and Sustainability. You are the director of that office. You've been on before. Thank mm -hmm. you for being here once thank again. Thank you for having me. All right, so what is this, the mayor's agenda? What does it entail? Kind of what, for people out there that are just looking for some answer when it comes to traffic and that kind of thing, what does this do? Well, there are a lot of plans that are out there. Everybody's talking about transportation and transit, and a lot of our metro departments had thought about some long-range plans. MTA had done their in motion plan, Public Works had done the walk and bike plan for sidewalks and bikeways, and um, uh, and it actually it all started with the Metro Planning's update to our general plan, which was Nashville Next, how we want to grow in Davidson County. The goal of the mayor's action agenda was really to look at all of those things within those plan plans and what we can do what we can accomplish in the next three years um, obviously at state of metro the mayor announced plans to work on a uh, light rail line on gallatin which is was talked about in the mta and motion plan and this is the action agenda is really to help us set the stage to improve bus service build more sidewalks build more bikeways um, utilize technology to improve the flow of all of our streets uh, and really set the stage for um, light rail and and future mass transit investments and so when you say what's realistic within the next three years, I mean, that's good. I think people want to mm -hmm. kind of understand we can't do everything, mm -hmm. but what can we realistically do in the next three years? And, and then cost, you know, how are we going to pay for that mm -hmm. in the next three years? What do people need to know? Well, the first thing that the first thing that you need to know is that one of the one of the main actions that's um, identified in the getting it done chapter is that we need to have a dedicated funding source for for transportation. Um, and and the mayor has talked about wanting to um, do a transit referendum in 2018. And so I think we're all focused focused on that. Um, and I think when when you try and fund transportation out of the general fund, that's really difficult to do. Um, and you, having a dedicated funding source, because when you're talking about it from the general fund, it's competing against all the other priorities, schools, public safety. Um, so I think we're, we're very much thinking about the referendum, but the mayor isn't waiting for the referendum as well. She um, increased MTA's operating budget by 20% in this year's budget, as well as doubling their capital budget. And so um, again, this action agenda is, is identifying areas where we can make progress in the near term. I want to talk more about the referendum because that's going to be huge. That's going to be a big thing we'll be discussing for the next several years, I'm sure. That's a big deal. But as far as public works, what what is the role public works is taking in addressing all of these issues? When, when you look at transportation across Nashville, there are a lot of players. You've got TDOT uh, taking care of big roads and interstates. The MPO is an organization that looks at regional movements, regional uh, traffic, and, and what projects are needed to, to improve that. Planning is a big part of it. Sometimes we overlook our planning department, but they are, they are critical when we think about the land use and transportation uh, connection uh, between the two. Uh, and then there's a number of other another a number of other sources MTA is another big one uh, that we work consistently with um, as far as public works goes when we look at all of those players and we look at what's in the plan a lot of it falls to our department uh, we we typically take care of, of roadways traffic uh, we do a lot with uh, intersections and traffic signals and all of those have impacts on safety and safety is a big component of what's in the plan and so a lot of what this does is, is um, prioritize the work that we're already doing. So when you talk about cost, there, there isn't a, a tremendous amount of brand new initiatives in here that we've just never seen before. Mm -hmm. what, it, what we find a lot of value in is that it's the work that we're doing day to day uh, anyway, and it might change or it might shift our emphasis and our focus a little bit, but it's work that we know that we have to take care of. And this plan just focuses in, focuses in on 
uh, those things that we really need to, to pay attention to over that next three-year period. So those things that you're already doing, some of that would include sidewalks. I mean, I know that's a big issue for a lot of people. So that's going to be, what, amped up, or what, what would you say there? Sidewalks continue to be funded well. Uh, we're, we're in budget season right now, and, and everything looks like it's pointing to a, a very healthy allocation for sidewalks again, which is really important when we start talking about um, all, all kind of transportation, not just people who might want to make a trip by walking, but you think about the connection between sidewalks and its importance on making transit trips. You, you know, it's hard to get to a bus stop if you don't have sidewalks to make that trip by. So, uh, yeah, sidewalks are going to continue to be a, an important focus for public works. Uh, and what about forward. redirecting traffic flow? There's some areas where I know we're talking about doing that, and that's maybe some people love it, some people don't love it. And, and how does that fit into this? How often are we going to see that kind of thing? I think I'm talking about, was it 8th Avenue? There's right. some concern about that. Um, some people love it, some people don't love it. How, how big of a weapon is that when we're talking about addressing transportation issues? It, it's, it's critical and it, and it is a subject that is going to continue to be the source of, of a lot of discussion across the city for some time to come. We're seeing it right now on 8th. We've already seen it in other corridors, but, but 8th is not the only one. We've got major projects that are either in design or in some cases very near to construction or, or even in con conceptual planning stages on Nolensville Road, on Gallatin Road. I'm sure we'll get to talk about some of those. Uh, and, and 8th as well. In, in the case with 8th Avenue, you have a corridor, not unlike a lot of corridors in, in Nashville where a tremendous amount of new development is or has occurred and we know that there's more to come. And that brings with it certain issues. In the case of 8th Avenue, it, it is very much a pedestrian issue walking along 8th Avenue as well as pedestrians trying to cross the street. And so what we are trying to do, partnering with, with the city of Berry Hill in this case and TDOT as well, is to try to develop what's what's the optimal use of, of this limited infrastructure. Uh, right now it's four lanes and, and maybe it needs to stay four lanes for traffic. Maybe it needs to be reconfigured to do something else. And so that's the conversation that is continuing. And, and you're right, it, it is a, a balance of, of needs and wants and, and how and existing conditions versus what we hope these corridors can and will be in the future. Because you're not, it's not likely that you're going to why, you're not going to have more lanes than you have. That's right. You have a finite amount of space. Mm -hmm. And so what do you do there? There are a bunch of these condos going up on both mm -hmm. sides. Mm -hmm. and, and there's a proposal to put in bike lanes, right? Mm -hmm. To put in more bike lanes. And, and is that the future? And then how much pushback will there be? And how much... I guess it, when, when there is something like that, how much input does the community have? And, and when do you say, okay, I know you're uncomfortable with this, but we're going to do it. <laughs> well, if I can, if yes, I can jump add in, in cause, yes, because we definitely are getting lots of feedback and input on Eighth Avenue in the mayor's office, and and um, I do want to make clear that there have been two phases to this project. The um, the southern phase was initiated by the city of Berry Hill, and Metro is right now doing this the the northern phase, which is Wedgwood to the Eighth Avenue roundabout. Um, and we are at the very beginning stages of the process. We're just updating our traffic study numbers, uh, and we won't even have that study completed until the end of the summer. So your question about public input is the right one because um, no recommendation has been made from, from Metro's perspective, and, and we are listening to all the input that we're getting in, um, and, and, and you know, we'll incorporate that into our, into our, into our study. I think the, the comment that Jeff was making, though, is that in a lot of these situations, there isn't a clear right answer, um, and, and 8th Avenue is a great example of that. Um, a lot of folks that are further south um, from from the section of 8th Avenue that we're talking about use that road to get into town, and and, and they want it to main, to to stay, um, you know, an artery to get to get into town with. While the people that live around that neighborhood that are seeing that development come up and they want to be able to walk to the restaurants on 8th Avenue, um, they want it to be safer. Um, I think that the data that we have on that corridor is that there were 597 vehicle crashes on that section of 8th Avenue over the last four years and four, and four deaths. And so part, really? of, That's fascinating. part of this action agenda is the mayor's commitment to Vision Zero and saying that no traffic fatalities are acceptable. And, and, and we think that there's a number of things that we can be doing across all of our departments, um, but definitely led by public works that can help us 
move in the direction of not accepting um, any traffic fatalities um, in, in the future. And so, and then last on this, then we'll move on. Will there be public hearings about that? Or you said you're yes. taking input over the summer. How does that work? We're, we're doing a number of, of public inputs. A lot of it is being led by our councilmen, uh, our council members that are in that area. Colby Sledge is, and, and Freddie O'Connell are, are the two council members that the corridor runs right through. But a number of other council members whose who's, um, constituents are around that neighborhood are also holding community meetings. Um, and then once we get into sort of the recommendation phase, and th those meetings are happening now, so we're getting that input even as we're completing the traffic study. Um, and we started with a visioning meeting um, a couple months ago to sort of hear from the community about what their vision is for the corridor uh, and and then as we move um, into having more of the traffic data and we're starting to think about scenarios we will definitely have more community input. And lastly before we go to commercial <laughs> do you see that okay so that's a specific example mm -hmm. do you see that as an example of, of a broader sort of debate that mm -hmm. we as a city will be having yes. in communities that stretch well beyond the one we mentioned there. Yes. You know, how much are we going to rely on our cars? How much are we going to rely on some other form of transportation, mm -hmm. whether it be walking or biking? Mm -hmm. um, you know, people aren't going to be able to, I don't, I don't know, the walking and biking is certainly, uh, that's what they want in that area. Right. But then you have all the other people who want to use areas. I'm not sure, though, that 8th that is, is really representative of what's going to happen in every corridor. It, you know, it's very much a case-by-case -case basis. And when we look at, uh, one thing about the 8th is, um, we're being a little bit opportunistic here. And the reason I say that is because this all started, a lot of it started, and, and at least why it's happening right now is because there's a paving project coming. Right. You know, there's there's some water work that's gonna happen uh, through Metro Water, but then there's also a big paving project coming through from TDOT, and, and so the idea was this was a good opportunity to at least have this discussion, this consideration of before we do it and put it back just the way it is now, should we at least consider what an alternative could be for 8th? And so that's one part of it. Uh, and, and I don't know if the other corridors will get into this same discussion of do we limit roadway width or, or how do we reallocate that finite amount of space. Uh, it's, it's certainly good and it's been educational for us uh, as Metro to go through this process and we will go through a similar process, you know, whatever we decide, led by a tremendous amount of, of public input and, uh, and questioning and, and uh, studying and those kind of things. Well, that kind of sets the table for a topic in which there is plenty to discuss. We want to invite you to join us. There's a number at the bottom, 615-737-PLUS, 615-737-7587. Give us a call if you have a question or comment. We'll take a break. Be back right after this.